Well, good morning, folks. It is just before 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It is July 11th here on Saturday. And what we're going to do is we're going to live go through some of the uh, goings-on of the sun and earth. Not much to report on here this morning, so we figured we'd do it live. And let me start by sharing my screen, which always takes a moment here. Okay, we're coming to spaceweathernews.com, and what we have here is the AIA 131 and 193 sitting right next to each other with 48-hour loops of their activity. Now, you can see some surging going on in uh, the background uh, on the back side of the star or on the limbs around the outside of these circles, but on the Earth-facing disk, and the, sat uh, the satellite does look right from Earth, there's really not much activity. Now, if you'll uh, pardon me for one second, I'm going to make sure that that is working. It does appear to be working. We've had trouble with it before, so you'll excuse me. Anyway, like I said, we are at spaceweathernews.com. And we can see that solar flaring has not been uh, too interesting the last day. Uh, when we come and we take a look at the sunspots, we still have this departing group up there still very large let's go in and take a better look at it here on the magnetogram you can see that we do have this large sunspot group there but the magnetics really are not mixing very well um, we had that one over to the side as well uh, that just was born a couple days ago but it is departing uh, coming back and we have this one down here as well much much smaller uh, very much together and as you can see those are both positive and all of the red and Yellow negative is just sort of, uh, you know, surface plaguing and uh, penumbral magnetism. But anyway, the real story here is that we have uh, a magnetic storm going on at Earth due to a coronal hole stream impact. You can see this here in the solar wind. Uh, we were talking about this a bit yesterday, uh, how we have this density spike right there. That is the slower particles getting bunched up out ahead of the faster particles, just like snow gets bunched up on the edge of a shovel blade. Anyway, once the shovel blade or coronal hole stream strikes and the speed and plasma temperature rise, and by the way, that uh, rise in plasma temperature, and I'll just go ahead and click on this so we can get a little bit better look at it. Uh, this rise in plasma temperature is from about one to 2,000 Kelvin, and we're pushing 100,000 Kelvin now. Uh, the solar wind speed rose from below 400 kilometers per second. We are now pushing uh, about 650 or 700 kilometers per second. There was a fairly good density shock out in front of that. Anyway, we will come back here and take a look. Uh, we did have uh, some magnetic storm activity, level 1, KP5 only. The magnetometer shows a fairly strong disruption, however, I, I wouldn't have expected there to be this much of a deviation on the magnetometer just based on, you know, what we're seeing here with the uh, magnetic storms and even just what we saw up here with the solar wind. Uh, other than that, you can take a look at the electron flux. This is really sensitive. It shows any space weather impact, and so you can see the smooth curves absolutely obliterated by that coronal hole stream. That is pretty much our major uh, thing to report today. I want to uh, give thanks really quickly. Uh, for those of you who don't know, our first uh, conference for the observers, Observing the Frontier, is going to take place uh, October 17th and 18th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, you can come in and see all the speakers we've got listed. Professor Dunning, uh, who's currently visiting Caltech. Uh, Professor Robitaille, Dave Talbot. Uh, Dr. Kong Papu Yen will be there as well. And I would like to thank the Frontiersmen. We have our, uh, you have to excuse me while I zoom in here. We have our first uh, sponsors for the conference, and that is the Frontiersmen. I met a lot of these folks when I was on the road in the Mobile Observatory, uh, specifically in West Virginia. Really good folks. And uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, supporting. Uh, supporting the science and supporting the observers in general. That's that's very cool. If if you guys want to be sponsors as well, uh, there's a link right below that on the page. Let me zoom out here. 
Uh, apparently it took me all the way to the bottom. So you can see you can click I want to sponsor or contact and anybody who did sponsor the mobile observatory. It's it's very, very cheap to sponsor this as well. Anyway, the re one of the reasons why we uh, feel comfortable just hitting the, the high points today is because we uploaded a video about six or seven hours ago called The Sun is Going to Sleep. This is an important one. Um, probably the heliophysics discovery of the year, uh, if not of the decade now confirms what our four years of diligent solar watching uh, has come to force us to conclude, and that is that the sun is going to sleep. We have seen uh, not only all of the solar indices from sunspots, solar flares, geomagnetic storms, CMEs, uh, solar wind pressure, proton events, all of these indices are dropping, including the solar polar magnetic field strength as well, we are witnessing sunspot decay in an Earth-facing position, much like the Maunders did 400 years ago. And last but not least, now the mathematical models, which are finally uh, matching up to observational data, says that, yes, indeed, we are going down for a grand minimum. This is a very easy video to understand. Um, this video was made so that you could share it with your friends or family. Um, you know, maybe with whom you you can't quite get some of this material across, or maybe they're they don't want to listen to it, or they don't understand it. Uh, this is six easy minutes to understand. It was designed to be shared like that, and of course, it is going to be linked for you right below this video. So anyway, back real quick over to spaceweathernews.com. We are sort of in the reverberation period for these magnetic storms due to the arrival of a coronal hole stream. Earth-facing disk, very, very calm. There's really nothing to speak of uh, apart from some of the activity we had on the limb, which is mostly filamentary, uh, just going, uh, just becoming visible around the sides there. Otherwise, uh, the flaring is down, and uh, you know we'll keep our eyes on all of it. Don't forget, folks, uh, it is Saturday, so we've got fly on the wall coming in just a few hours, and um, eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.